so we got the the back cover the lid cover the underneath parts and uh, the flat plate from this company called grill roast from germany and um, they all do stainless steel they look like they're all stamped out they seem to be a uh, fairly decent quality like you know i was impressed now they're quite expensive but let's see if it makes any difference i like the idea of this back one i'm not too sure i had to buy the lid one because you know when in rome and the flat plate one over here that has a serious bit of weight and i'll show you that later um the lid one i'm not too sure this the prestige 500 already has a liner in the lid so I'm not too sure what we're gonna do there we'll have a look anyway and um, these are meant to increase the gas the heat and decrease the gas let's see so this is what they look like they're fairly thick I'm not too sure exactly what mill they are I think they're one mil they look pretty good it has a They just fit in here. I'll give you a closer look. So when you come down, they go underneath. There's a little notch that they fit into. If you look, see closely here, you can see this notch here. The notch there. You can't really see the notch on the back there, especially with this one there. Um, there is a, there is a notch at the back that they notch into here and here on both of them and it's this is nice and clean part here because this is where I had the flat plate so this and this pretty straightforward to fit you fit them in let's say less than two minutes <clears throat> the idea is that they reflect the heat back up. So let's see how the, the next part goes. Gonna this. So we're gonna fit the lid part first uh, into the 3 8 socket or spanner. And some type of flathead. This is just the tools I have on hand at the moment. I'll give you a little quick look. What we're talking about here, this screw here, you're gonna hold it with the the flathead and then take out the little bolt here. Just make sure you don't lose the washer off it. So there's one of them just inside the grill here, and one on this side, and then the lid will be loose. So just watch out, we're gonna lift the lid onto something soft. I have a little cover off uh, something over here, I'm going to lay it down on it, so I'm going to lift it up. Just going to remove the little pins, that's what they look like. On both sides. To make sure it doesn't drop, I have my hand on the top part there. So, um just weigh a little bit. Just put the hand on the back here. Put it down like a little bag there, but you could potentially use um, like a towel. So while I'd have the lid off, you actually don't need to take the lid off to do this part, but um, 716 socket. And we are going to take this one off. Just went a little bit further up there, it's a little bit hard to see there. Same gig here, there, and there. They actually pop out if you do want them, take them out, and they're on a little square head, so just watch they don't fall off or whatever. And then you're just gonna pop in the new part. So basically, this, this heat shield goes in. And we're going to 
evolved that in. So give me two minutes and I'll come back to it. So what I'll advise is um, popping it down and popping the bottom ones on just loose, a couple of threads, and then you can kind of manipulate it into place. Like this. Get it in there. Washer. washer was actually stuck on on one or two of them when I was taking it off originally. So make sure you don't lose the washer. Catch it in there. Pretty straightforward. So I just said you don't really need to take the lid off of this. Uh, it actually looks better even if it does nothing. I recommend getting this because it looks Probably easier to clean as well, you know. So yeah, I used a little extension. Don't go mad on the bolts because they are small, like, you know. And just tighten them up. So, so with your lid resting on something soft or whatever, uh, we're gonna remove this one, this one, this one, this one. So four on this side, four on that side, and the one bolt there for. This bad boy, so see it back like that. They are the same as the 3 8, and the other one is a 14 mil or what's the equivalent of metric? Uh, 9 16s or something like that, is it? So you'll have to kind of push the edge of this off, right, to get it off. I'm just going to lift this out. So it sits under these these kind of lips here, but if you do, you can kind of just push it enough on both sides just to wiggle it out. Um, so this new part just fits in. So the two little holes to match these two little holes. in its place and then you will have to kind of wiggle it around to get it into place with the new one it's only marginally thicker now it is a you gotta see that there it is a bit wobbly you wouldn't I'm not bending that it's probably double the thickness I'd say so hopefully it does do something they kind of missed an opportunity here where to leave that plate in and put this one on top of it. I tried to fit it in and it, it wouldn't fit. And um, the bends are slightly different. I might actually try bend it a little bit to try get the and leave that one in to triple insulate it to make it even thicker. And um, there was there and I'll see can I do that. You can kind of see the thickness difference there. Um, yeah, I was hoping to try fit the bolt with a main but I don't think it's gonna be possible without unless you have a, a folder or something like that we can put a little bend a bend in it and maybe some machine work drilling the holes out or something like that just doesn't seem to want it you can kind of see the difference even there it won't match up like but I think it could be kind of like a missed opportunity but then again what kind of difference would it make with this smaller piece? You can definitely see the difference in thickness there. It's at least double anyway. It's quite flimsy this stuff, like you can kind of see it. You can't really bend the stainless net. Now if you put a bit good bit of force in, I'm sure you could. Anyway, we'll pop it in and see how it goes. Yeah, so we I couldn't fit the other part in anyway, so um, you're going to tighten these four screws back up. It's actually only two holding on the heat shield. But you can kind of see where it sits underneath it here. So you kind of have to push that out a tiny bit on both sides just to get it in. Um, you can kind of see it there. So what I done was loosely put in this one, this one and the front one. And then this one was a little bit difficult. So I only have a letter man 
I suppose if you had a flathead screwdriver or some type of pick and kind of pried up this part here a tiny bit, nothing major, just to lift it up the, the access hole to get the screw in. Just watch, this is aluminium so you don't go crazy hard and they're coarse thread and um, bolts so you don't want to pull the, pull the threads on them you know um, they're all tight there and then pop your little cover your little thermostat back on there is a big washer and then a little washer and then you have to show them again they'll go crazy on the air motor it's um i'd probably give it clean because the oils from your hand is that they're kind of going around that little bit but it does look like it'll be way easier to clean anyway it's a good bit thicker i wouldn't say it's usually thicker but it's definitely double the thickness that anyway so let's see if it does anything just make note here that there is a little flat head slot and when you're tightening this it can just make note of which direction it is in because it can affect the temperature reading on the front so i'll have to adjust it just to be uh, exactly where it was previously at zero basically you know, pointing towards this one pointing towards the force indication on it just be careful because you can't even just torn out a little bit and it's still tight to adjust it i'll adjust it on the barbecue itself so i just used the spanner and put the hand in like that to adjust the a little gauge around back to where it was originally so make note of that it was just pointing down towards zero basically it's not zero but <clears throat> so just make note that you don't have that further down because the more you nip it the more it wants to turn around i got this leveling kit off amazon and um, you can kind of see it there it's fairly basic i suppose you could make one but it was cheap enough um, it does a pretty decent job. It's quite wide. I've seen other packers and stuff like that which weren't as wide as this. You could also trim it here, you know, cut it here and make it just if you only needed that piece there. You could have just the smaller run there, you know, probably just snap off. I do have a level on it there. It's pretty, pretty decent. I also got these little bits here. Obviously, it's starting to rain here when I'm having a barbecue. And um, it's just a little hook. So, if you actually have a look down here, I have the rod. The, the rod of the spit hooked on. And they just kind of go in. Hook in there. Pretty easy. I might print another one of these. I got a friend to print one and hang it down lower for the top shelf, and and you can hang it off that as well. But works with a cover and everything, so it's pretty handy to store it out of the way. Um, I've been using the the plate a good bit. Just made some burgers there, so I'm gonna shoot in before it starts pissing rain. And um, this thing's been held on up pretty well. Like I'm just after taking the burgers off it there. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. You can see the kind of discoloration of the back part, but that's just that's pretty just dosh or whatever, you know, a bit of oil. It's been working out pretty well so far. Can I recommend it? Definitely recommend this. This is great. And the back piece for cleaning, much easier. As I said before and earlier on the video, I'm not too sure about this, but it is much thicker and it will be easier to clean, so all good. <laughs> 